Hey guys, welcome to our first read comprehension questions for 10 Mile Day. If you have not already gone to Savas or Pearson Realize and listened or read the story 10 Mile Day, you need to stop this right now and double back and do that. That was an assignment on Friday, and this is not going to make a lot of sense unless you have gone through the story already. Right, so let's get started so we can get finished. Uh, this is a part of the story. Uh, that was towards the end of the story, but we're going to start with it here. It says, at 1.30, the whistle sounded, calling for uh, calling a halt for lunch. Whirlwind number 62, the Pioneer train locomotive, pushed the kitchen cars up, and the boarding boss served hot, boiled beef. A quick measurement showed that six miles of track had already been laid, spiked, and bolted that morning. Whoops and hollers went up as the news spread among the men. They were now confident they could reach their goal of 10 miles in one day, and they named their rest stop Camp Victory. So why were the workers so excited, and what does it mean to whoop and holler? Oh, uh, I think I can see why the workers are so excited. Uh, if you recall from the story, uh, they have a bet. Two railroad companies have a bet going to see if they can break the record of 10 miles in one day. Uh, and so they've already been working all morning. And it says they've done a quick measurement. And the measurement shows that six miles of track had already been laid, spiked, and bolted that morning. That means that as they stop for lunch... They'd already laid six out of the goal of 10. Do you see that? Six out of the goal of 10 miles had already been laid by lunch. So no wonder the men seem real excited. They're so excited. They're going to hoop and holler. Do you see hoop and holler? What's hoop and holler? Well, I know holler means to yell. So hoop must be another excited noise because they surely are excited, aren't they? And so they're so excited. They've already called it, haven't they? They've said, oh, we just need to name our stop for lunch. We're going to name our stop Camp Victory because we got this in the bag, right? So can't, they already excited because they have uh, made six miles out of the 10 even before lunch. That's pretty impressive. So can you hoop and holler? Uh, I want you to hoop and holler right now, out loud. Woo! Hoop and holler. The crews flung their hats into the air, cheering and shaking hands all around. They had done the impossible again. The Union Pacific's record was destroyed, and Thomas Durant lost the bet. A total of 3,520 rails, twice that number of fish plates, 28,160 spikes, and 14,080 nuts and bolts had been placed to complete the job. Wow, that's a lot of metal in one day. So we're going to make an inference. When you make an inference, you use what you know about a story and what you know about people uh, and how they react. So how do you think those workers felt at the end of the day, having laid all that metal down? Oh, look at that. The crews flung their hats into the air, cheering and shaking hands. I think they're super pumped, aren't you? And I think they're proud and rightfully proud, right? Should they be proud of that work? All that metal laid in one day, breaking the record, winning the bet? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, they should be proud. Proud would be a good word to describe their mood by the end of the story, right? How much rail had the men from the Central Pacific laid? Two Union Pacific engineers took out their surveying chains and began to measure. Everyone waited for the final count. And then it came. The railhead was 10 miles, 56 feet farther east than it had been the previous evening. The crews flung their hats into the air, cheering and shaking hands all around. They had done the impossible again. And the Union Pacific's record was destroyed. And Thomas Durant lost the bet. So the effect, what was the effect of having the Central Pacific workers lay more than 10 miles of track in one day? And what evidence can we use to prove it? So they made it, didn't they? They made it 10 miles and 56 feet. So what, that, if that was the cause, what was the uh, effect? What happened right after? So because they laid 10 miles in one day, the effect was, that's right. They flung their hats into the air, cheering and shaking hands all around, right? So they celebrated, that was an effect. 
but also they destroyed the record. They broke the record, right? Uh, they broke the record. Like in sports, if you run the most or you throw the most footballs uh, or you score the, the most goals, you make a record. They had a record and they beat it, didn't they? And they won the bet and Thomas Durant uh, lost the bet. Thomas Durant, remember, ran the Union Pacific Railroad and he lost because he bet against him. He said, you can't make it 10 miles in one day. But they proved him wrong and he lost the bet, right? Uh, so because they laid 10 miles, the crew celebrated, they broke the record, and Thomas Durant lost the bet. Cause and effect. That's our evidence, right? Oops. At 2.30, work began again, but a special crew had to be called in. The tracks were now climbing the west slope of the promontory mountains. The climb was steep and full of curves, and the rails had to be bent. Lacking measuring instruments, this new crew judged the curves by sight. They jammed the rails between blocks and then slowly and carefully hammered them into the right shapes. Every rail now took extra time to mold and fit. So why aren't the workers going fast on this part of the track and what evidence could we use to prove it? Well, definitely they're going slower because they're having to climb a, that's right, they're climbing a mountain, huh? And so because they're climbing the mountain huh? and it's steep and it's full of curves, they're having to what? The rails that the train rides on. They're having to bend them. They're having to bend them. They're having to jam them in between blocks and slowly and carefully hammer them into the right shape. No wonder it's taking so long. They're having to fit them just exactly uh, up on the side of the mountain as they're going. So definitely it's taking extra time, right? Extra time to hammer these rails into shape. They're doing it by sight. That's impressive. These guys are some tough dudes. All right, let's keep going. Uh, as the afternoon wore on, the foreman continued to ride the line, encouraging the men. Although the horses pulling the iron cars were changed every two hours, they could no longer run up the grade. Now they had to walk slowly up the steep hillside. You see hillside and grade? Do you think they're related? The rail gang was dripping with sweat, and their muscles must have burned from overuse, but not one man stopped to rest. With each hour, another mile of track reached towards Promontory Summit. They had done the impossible again. The Union Pacific's record was destroyed, and Thomas Durant lost the bet. So it says, with hard work and strong spirits, the men of the Central Pacific laid more track in one day than ever before. What evidence could we use to prove that statement true? What proves that they laid more track in one day than had ever been done before? Well, if you spotted this little paragraph down at the bottom, you're doing great. Ah, uh, you're doing great. That proves that what they did, laying that 10 miles of track, was something that hadn't been done before. But now we're going to look up here in the body of the main paragraph here. Is there a sign, a sentence that shows the men have done something that hasn't been done before and they worked hard at it when they did it? If you spotted this sentence, the rail gang was dripping with sweat and their muscles burn, must have burned from overuse, but not one man stopped to rest. Good for you. That's definitely some text evidence that shows uh, that the men were doing something uh, that had not been done before. They had laid more track in a day than had ever been done before. All right, guys, I'm going to see you tomorrow to go over our second read questions. Stay safe.